very warm welcome to everyone who joined us today. My name is Alex Sempre. The title of today's webinar is, as you can see, Coaching and Youth, How to Interact, Connect, Lead, and Disciple Young People. Before I go into the content and coaching, I would love just to share a little bit about myself and my background. So I live in a beautiful country of Slovenia, which is not Slovakia. Slovakia, great country as well, great people, been there a couple of times, um, just not the same. And I am a youth worker with an organization called Josiah Venture, which is reaching youth in Central and Eastern Europe. So on a local level, I am overseeing uh, children and youth ministry in, in my local church. And then on a national level, I lead a discipleship program for college students. And I just stepped into a role of uh, summer and we also have winter camps uh, like a couple of months ago. So it was just great timing. <laughs> lots of uncertainty, lots of questions. I'm still figuring out how, how, to, how to be in this role, but I trust that God has a plan and he knew um, that this will happen and I trust his timing. But beside the, these ministries, I am also finishing a coaching program this school year, which has been a great adventure and that taught me a lot about God and taught me a lot about myself and how to love uh, people better. And today I want to share some of the insights, um, some of the lessons that I uh, learned and introducing you to some very basic coaching principles. So unfortunately, uh, at the end of uh, today's session, you will not be a professional coach. Uh, we also won't go too deeply into the coaching, but we will talk about a couple of coaching principles that you are either already using or you can start using the very first second after this webinar is over. So that's, that's the, the hope of this, uh, uh, of our time together. Okay, so as I said, this uh, webinar has three parts. First one, we will answer the question, what coaching is? The second part will be, what does the Bible say about coaching? Does it say anything about coaching? Um, and then the third question will be, what does that have to do with youth ministry? or how can we implement some of the coaching principles into the youth ministry. So first, I would like to start with a actually very recent story. I, um, were, I had the aha moment, and um, it was long, long, long way coming. But um, so I've been leading youth ministry, uh, high, specifically high school youth group, for a couple of years now. And uh, four years ago, when I took over, I, uh, there were lots of changes happening. And I won't go into details, but long story short, I was very short on leaders. So when you're short on leaders, you know, you start to look around and you're like, okay, Lord, um, who's been around, who has been faithfully attending youth ministry, um, who has eyes on you? and has, uh, you know, following you, obeying you, um, and just praying, Lord, okay, open my eyes. Who can I invite to, to my team? Who can I invest in? Who could benefit from um, serving in youth, youth ministry? So immediately there were two girls, rock stars, um, loved the Lord, loved the girls connecting, just they were on my team immediately. and then. But I was still, Lord, I, I need a, a male person also on the team. It can be just three girls. And I, there was this one, there was, again, different reasons. We didn't have a lot of male in our a church that would be interested in or even available to do high school youth ministry. But there was this um, one guy who was 19 years old, very quiet. Um, but I said, okay, Lord, let's, let's give it a try. I would love, I would love to see what, what you have for us. And um, I invited him to the team. Uh, he said yes. And then for over a year, he, whenever we had leaders meeting, 
and uh, he was very quiet. Uh, we were planning um, things or giving responsibilities, and he was he was there. He he was present, but he was very quiet, or he had two responses. First one was. Um, if I tried to engage him and ask him, hey, what do you think? He would say, I don't know, um, if he was the first one. Or the second response was um, whatever someone before him said it. So I hope you get the picture. He was present, he was faithful, um, yet he rarely shared anything. Um, and at that point, I really, really wish I... I knew what coaching is or that someone would come to me and share some of the coaching principles. Um, so the, that's why I would love to share a little bit more with you about coaching principles uh, today. Um, before we go into what coaching is um, so that you can understand why I wished I, um, I had people that would uh, introduce coaching principles to me, we will look at what coaching is not. So there are many different techniques um, of helping or standing with youth, and coaching is just one of them. Uh, we, in different seasons, in different situations, uh, youth needs different approaches. So, um, but to paint a better picture what coaching is, uh, I will really quickly just go through what it's not. So coaching is not mentoring. Um, we see a uh, definition, a very, very basic definition of uh, what mentoring is. But basically, it's giving. Um, uh, uh, so the activity of giving a younger or less experienced person help and advice over a period of time, especially at work or in school. So, for example, I for the last couple of years, I've been mentoring youth in our church how to lead summer English camp. They came to me, we met, I uh, gave them all the knowledge that I had, spreadsheets, we made a plan, and I mentored them how to be a camp director. So that uh, mentoring is not coaching. Uh, it's mentoring it's a lot of giving my advice, my knowledge to someone less experienced. Uh, then we also have, for example, coaching is not counseling. So here we have the definition, the job of or process of listening to someone and giving that person advice about their problems. So for example, um, that would be a, uh, a girl coming to me and saying, hey, my, my parents don't support my faith and it's been really, really hard at home. Can we talk about it? And we, we would talk and we would discuss it. Um, but again, counseling, uh, coaching is not counseling either. We also have uh, psychotherapy, many different great, great techniques. Um, we could also have some other methods as problem solving. A person comes to me and would say, hey, how can I, I don't know, lead a Bible study? And um, that could also be mentoring for, or they would have a problem and I would give them a solution to a problem, uh, giving advice or just listening. It could also, Coaching is also not just listening, where people just share and I, I don't guide them into any direction. Um, so all of those techniques are great, but uh, that is not coaching. So then what is coaching? Um, here we have, again, a very basic definition, but uh, it says the uh, coaching is the activity of helping clients decide what they want in their lives and how to achieve it. So life coaching is about looking forward rather than looking into your past for solutions to problems. So some of the other methods that we just shared uh, may focus on the past, um, some of the good things or hard things. But um, I don't know, I've been really hurt by this person and you go and you know, you're talking about the past Whereas coaching is, I don't know if there is a problem or a desire, but helping um, the client or whoever comes to you is to like, okay, where do you want to go? You're here, okay, but you want to be there. So for example, I would, um, my goal could be, I would love to be a better cook. So I would be coached on how to cook better. 
and um, that would be my goal. And then I would I wouldn't be looking so much in the past, um, but looking how can I take a step forward to become a better cook. Um, so here is again very brief briefly um, uh, a structure. So you come up with a goal. I I would like to be a better cook. Um, then you explore what that means. Like, what does that mean to you? Um, what have you learned? Uh, what, where are you at right now? So you're just exploring what, why this goal? What does it mean to you? Then you come up with different options of what you can, what are some optional steps that you could take forward? And then you make a decision, okay, I will buy myself a cookbook and I will read the first chapter till the next time we meet. So you're coming with an options and then an action step. And then the next time you meet, you talk about how those steps uh, went and what's the next step that you can take forward. So again, it's very like, okay, I look forward. Um, it's not looking, looking back. So this is very, very briefly of what coaching is. Um, and one of the reasons why I love coaching or even some of the coaching principles is that coaching conversation is very powerful because it's not just listening, but uh, coaching conversation brings structure of thinking, like, okay, why is this important to you? Of planning, what, what are some of the options that, what, what could you do? Uh, then deciding, okay, I will do this next step. And then being a cheerleader as they, uh, as they do it. Um, it's not giving the advice. Um, coaching is very much, I have full confidence that the Holy Spirit can speak to, to you as well, not just through me. It brings people from dependence towards maturity. Instead of just telling people what to do, coaching helps people mature in making their own decisions. Um, it teaching a person how to, uh, how to grow in their responsibility and to depend on the Lord. Uh, we can walk with our youth uh, or as we coach them, encourage them providing, their, their, uh, providing space to stop, um, to reflect, um, and then to take a step forward. So it's all about, you know, okay, this is where I'm at, this is what, what I'm thinking, and helping them make a plan um, to go to their goal. So oftentimes it's like it's like an iceberg. They come like youth comes to you with a problem or with a question. It's just a sur surface level. So then it's like going deeper into exploring why this is important to them and helping them move forward. It's also it's connecting the head and the heart. It, there's about 45 centimeters from head to the heart or 18 inches. Um, but sometimes as we've all experienced it, it's the longest path. So unfortunately, as I said, we cannot go into the depths of coaching, even though I would love to, and I will give you some resources, some of the program that you can join or some of the books. But today, because our time is limited, we will look at three different principles, very basic ones. You've already using them will just bring some more intentionality um, and how maybe you can tweak it as you're using it. So the first principle, very basic one, is asking questions. When a young person comes to you with a problem or with a thought or they don't know what to do, uh, ask them a question to see what's beneath that. Like what, what's the question behind their problem or the question behind the question that they're asking? Where are they coming from? What have they tried before? Um, how is that affecting them? Uh, ask them a question. And, but there's also, and there you can have a whole session just on how to ask good questions or you can be studying that for a whole year. But I will also give you just one example of not a great question. Um, as you are, uh, as you're working with your youth, so it's so-called so solution-oriented questions are great illustration. Trying to change what youth does without changing who they are. 
So we are just giving them solutions or um, leading questions. We try to lead them to a certain path and that's so that they can get out of this problem and that's just giving them what to do and not so much um, changing who they are. So here's an example of the question. So the question is, um, a young person comes to you with a problem and uh, you're like, okay, I was at this uh, coaching and youth session at ELF. Um, I was told to ask questions. Okay, I'll ask a question. And then you say, like, they come up with the problem. You already have a solution in your, in your mind. And it's like, it's a clearly, they need to go to the pastor and you make a question out of it because we talked about it today. And uh, you would say, do you think you should talk to your pastor about that? And here's the thing. Um, I don't think that's a great question because if we look closely and if we just erase um, the first part and the question mark, it's actually not a question. It's uh, you should do that. So as you're thinking of questions to ask to, uh, to your youth, don't, don't do solution oriented questions. <laughs> it's, um, they'll just hear the should. Um, and then sometimes, especially if youth feels pushed and not understood, they, sometimes they won't do it or many times they won't do it. Um, so the first one is asking questions. The second one, is listening. When a young person comes to you with a question, with a problem, and you're like, okay, I, I won't go into a full advice mode all, right away. I will ask them a question. Then it's super important that you listen and uh, that you're present because the more you listen, the more you notice and the more you hear them. And with listening, I would like to add, especially if you're in a coffee shop or even on Zoom as we're right now, like I have a, a window right here and I could be listening to whatever person is saying, but then, oh, there's a tree and I have some pictures from the last five years on my wall. I have my phone right here. Oh, and the Bible, I'll check a verse. There are so many distractions where we ask a question but we don't really listen and we are not there. They're telling us things and we're already thinking about next question or the next meeting that we'll attend. When you, when a young person or, or whoever comes to you, try just to stop and listen and be fully present and not think about the next question that you would like to ask them, but just hear what they have to say. And, um, one of the things uh, in coaching that was super interesting to me is one time I, I had a coaching session and we talked about different things and she started sharing about how she has problem with, with time management. And then she just mentioned Trello, which is a online website or whatever, like helping you to track with time. And I was like, Oh, share a little bit more about that. And she went on for 20 minutes getting excited about Trello and how this helps her. And that was her next step. So when you're listening, you notice things and then follow up with that. What do they mean? Why they reacted excitement or why their uh, body language changed, but just be present and listening and listen. And then the last one. So the last coaching principle is uh, keeping them accountable. Uh, one thing that I'm trying to start is as I am meeting with youth, I'm and I'm not fully successful in that area. I must admit, I'm still I'm still working on that habit. But after we meet, just to spend five minutes and write down what they said, and then follow up with what they said in a week or two weeks. And so many times, I that I've done this, uh, people would say, "Oh, you listened," or you remembered and my first reaction is like oh shoot like should i wasn't i listening before but 
I think the point is like they really, really feel heard when I follow up a question and actually ask them how how things were. Because we are bombarded with so many information, we we oftentimes forget the conversation that we had in the morning. So um, keep them accountable. In a week, ask them how it went, um, how things were. Um, have a follow-up conversation. Um, but those are three principles that we will look at. So I just, I went through with them right now. We will look in the Bible and then specifically how that relates to youth even more. But at this point, um, as I explained what coaching is, um, I would like to continue with the story. So the, the one guy that joined the high school youth group and wasn't sharing at all, a couple of uh, weeks ago, I, we started coaching. Um, and the first session we had, he was talking, but then he became really, really quiet again. I was like, okay, it will be hard to coach if he, or even to talk to him if he's just quiet. Um, I asked him a question and he was quiet for one minute. It was a long minute. <laughs> and then after that minute, I just asked him, do you need more time to think? He was like, yes, actually, I would love to have more time. And we spent another five or six minutes in complete silence. And I wasn't sure first what if that's okay or not. But when he started to share the thoughts that he had, it was so encouraging to hear his insights. And at that point, I realized, man, I wish I would give him that much space four years ago when he joined the high school youth group uh, team to have a space where he could think. Um, and before, I was always just really quick to jump in and give suggestions. Um, and he had amazing insight. And I'm not saying that that's always the case and that we always have time to um, like we went through three questions in half an hour and 20 of those half an hour or even 25 were in silence. That's not always the case and that cannot always happen. But I, I wish someone would tell me just to stop and listen and be fully present and create space where he would be able to share some of his thoughts. Um, so that's why I'm sharing it with you today so that you can do learn on my mistakes. So now let's look um, at the Bible. And um, first I would like, but um, now that we're looking um, at the Bible, I would just like to make a few clarifications to make sure that we are on the same page. First, I don't think Jesus was a coach <laughs> and we for sure, we don't find life coaching in the Bible. However, Jesus did ask, a lot of questions and we even have quote right here something remarkable happened to people when jesus the self-proclaimed answered answer began asking questions so as i as i said i don't think jesus was a coach uh coaching specifically is not discussed or described described in the bible but we coaching is using some of the bible principles something that jesus used um so we will be learning from that from from the questions that jesus asked and then the second thing that i also just want to uh point point it out um that even if we stop and start looking within us and like we can find a lot of things in us uh our desires our dreams or even pain and guilt and shame or unused knowledge or uh, a melody and lyrics that are just waiting to be put in a song, we can find a lot of things or hidden strength in, within us and through coaching. But a person cannot find uh, salvation like just looking within themselves. Or can a person earn God's grace and love by focusing on themselves and how they can become a better person through coaching, um, to rise up to their potential and earn God's grace, that's always a no. So we can stand alongside youth and help them take steps forward 
um, but just looking within selves and becoming a better person or um, building on your potential, that doesn't earn you God's love or God's grace. And that's not, that's not what coaching is. A uh, Christian coach is not supporting this idea uh, to become whoever you want, do whatever you want, if you just believe in yourself and if you have a cheerleader. That's not what Christian coaching is. Um, Christian coaching in the true meaning, meaning places the practice of coaching in a humble position of the authority of, of God. Um, so shepherds le uh, lead from above and coach are from the side. It's always pointing to Jesus. Um, it's not do whatever you want to do, what, wherever you want to go, become whoever you want to be. Uh, it's always under the, uh, like under the authority of, of God. So I just wanted to clarify this before we look into some uh, coaching principles, specifically questions. And I have a question for you here, and I would love if you write it in a, uh, in a chat. Uh, in a chat. How many um, questions do you think are documented in the all four Gospels? What do you think? Just like it can be very, we'll see if, you know, if someone has a correct answer. I'm not trying to look at correct answers, but would you um, write it down? Great. Some of you are already writing. Just like how many how many questions do you think Jesus asked? So we're just looking at Jesus, not all questions in four gospels, but um, yeah. And some are, you know, are repeated in Mark and then in Luke as well. But how many do you think? Okay, we have quite a few different, so we have 50, 56, 250, 80, 60, 1,250, uh, 200, 300. That's great. I think some of, maybe, I don't know if some of you um, have already looked at, at questions in the, in the gospel. I was shocked when I started to do research. And if I have the right information, just from the questions that Jesus asked, it's over 300 questions that are documented in all four gospels, which I don't know about you guys, but that's just, to me, that's really interesting. Why would Jesus ask this many questions if he already knew all the answers? So that's the next question for you. Why do you think Jesus was asking so many questions? If you can go to your chat um, uh, and write some of your thoughts again, I would love to hear them. Why, why did Jesus ask so many questions if he already knew? all the answers. So let's see, I'll open the chat. Would love to hear some of your thoughts. Okay, um, so we have a couple of thoughts. Um, it is natural to lead people to think of the answers, uh, to make people think themselves, to get people thinking, okay? I think because he wanted to establish relationships with the people. I love, I love that. Um, get people thinking, to make people think, uh -huh. it keeps continuing, to activate uh, the brain. Um, yeah, thinking, engaging, making a point uh, via the right question, to reflect, um, to learn, to discover from the, their selves. Um, he was probing others to know what's underneath the surface. Yeah, that's the, the iceberg that I was uh, sharing as well. So people were asked, uh, so people who were asked could think about it and got the right answer. Those are some really, really good thoughts. Um, I, as I was looking at some of the questions and then even responses, um, I would also add to what you guys said. And um, I would add to also more effectively connect uh, with people um, so that he engaged. Uh, in what he was doing so that he was engaging them like okay I I'm modeling something for you and I'm engage, engaging you by asking questions I think he also uh, did to expose things by asking questions uh, to teach them to discover the truth I think there were many many things um, that Jesus did 
And I don't know about you guys, but I think many times when we ask questions, um, we don't do it with this reason. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But here are just some of the questions that Jesus asked. Um, I can also share with you uh, uh, the longer version, and it's also, I think, in, in the app. But if we could spend hours and hours just on each question itself right here. If you, one of the things that I would highly recommend to you if you are thinking of different ideas how to spend your mornings with the Lord, look at some of the questions. Um, read them out loud. Like um, maybe even at your, and just feel the the power, or not the power, but like the, the transformation that can happen and happen in people that were asked those questions. Like questions like, what do you want me to do for you? Do you want to get well? Um, do you believe I can do this in the situation where you are right now? Do you love me? Um, the, if we look at the questions that Jesus asked, it's, yeah, I, I would highly encourage you to do that. Um, and especially also responses. Again, we don't have time. I wish we would have enough time to go in depth. Um, we don't, but keep, keep digging into the questions that Jesus asked. As I said, it's over 300 of them. So I think you're covered for, for more than, I mean, some repeat, but for a good two thirds of the year, if you did every day, just one question. Um, so the heart behind the questions, I think it's good. Whenever uh, young people come to us um, with a problem or with a thought, um, it's really important where we're coming from, where our heart is when we ask question. The biggest difference between why Jesus asked a question to a certain person and why we usually ask a question is that, or if I go into um, for myself, oftentimes when I ask a question is to get information and an answer. Oftentimes I need something, so I'll ask a question or I want something and I want an answer to know where to go from there. Um, it's not always like that, but oftentimes it is. On the other hand, when Jesus asked a question, um, Jesus asked a question to, as we already shared a little bit, to expose, to bring an awareness, to teach, um, to shine a light uh, uh, on a specific issue, or even to, um, to bring healing, um, to bring people to make a decision. Um, so also, again, when you're asking questions to people around you, it doesn't just need to be used. Keep, like, keep in check where your heart is at and why you're asking that question. Is it just to get an answer or um, an information? Or is it to, to bring transformation? And again, it's Jesus and Holy Spirit who does that. It's not us. But even where my heart is when I'm asking those questions. We've already mentioned a lot of things for youth ministry as we were going, and now we'll just uh, be more specific. I love this quote, um, and I, I believe it's so true, especially with young people. And so it, it, it says, being heard is so close to being loved that for the most people, these two are almost indistinguishable. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, especially with the young people. Um, if we truly listen and are present as we're listening, they will feel loved. Um, so be present and listen. Um, but yeah, so if we return to the three principles, um, as I said in the very beginning, that's my hope that, um, and those principles are not, I hope are not new to you to ask questions, to listen, and to keep them accountable. Um, but one of the things that I would love to ask a question right now is to you, um, who is one person in your life that you feel most heard by? 
and what are they doing? Keep thinking of like, who are people in your life that really listen to you? What are they doing? What can you learn from them? And what are maybe even people that don't really listen to you in your life? And what can you learn from them as well? So that you don't uh, multiply what, what they're doing. Um, I, with listening again, I said like, as I mentioned before with the young people, be present. Um, I think what when I've been reflecting, what are the things that I really appreciate about people that I feel hurt from is that um, they they are looking at me and they're not always, sometimes you get distracted by things around you, but they're not always distracted. What also helped me is, helps me is that I stop making checklists of things that I need to do if I'm talking to a person or already thinking about um, my next meeting and what I'll say at the next meeting. And sometimes that, you know, you're stressed, you have a lot of things on your shoulders and that's hard to do. But I would encourage you keep thinking of like, what are the things that people are doing ar around me that I feel most heard? Um, but with listening again with young people, be present, be engaged, um, give them space, give them space that they can think. And sometimes you do need to point them back to what you ask them with another question. Um, but I would give you a challenge. I was challenged 10 months ago to uh, have a conversation with whoever I choose that I don't interrupt for 10 minutes so that whatever that like i ask a question and then if they stop talking like i ask another question it's not that i'm quiet for 10 minutes um but that, that i give that person that i give a person of my choice space for 10 minutes where i'm not like being oh yes that reminds me of thing uh, of a thing that you just said that i did and start talking about myself but just give them space for 10 minutes where they can reflect um, and it was powerful. I noticed different things that I've never noticed before. And then at the end, she was like, what was like, are, like, she was a little bit confused. And I was like, and then I did tell her, I am just learning to give more space and be a better listener. So, um, I would love to give you, maybe you a challenge as I was challenged 10 months ago that the next conversation or you choose a person that for 10 minutes, uh, you just listen and ask them like ask them questions, but don't interrupt or comment on and engage your like and put then um, attention on yourself. And also another thing is um, a phrase share more is an extremely powerful one. If a person stops and you see that they're still thinking, um just say share more and or ask them do you, would you like to share more or can i uh can i ask you to share more they can still say no but i would highly encourage you to to just use the phrase share more and people do open up so that would be with listening um and then uh asking questions we shared a little bit before too um not uh, try not to use solution oriented questions or leading questions uh, or closed questions um, try to open up um, i don't i'm trying to think um think about an example of um like this is maybe a silly example but uh do you prefer coffee or tea uh you can change that question to what do you like to drink so that the questions that you're asking are not just either or, or um, you had a good day, right? Or like, it's not already giving them an answer, but to stop and open up so that they can go wherever they wanna go. Um, and then again, keeping them accountable. Um, we already answered some of the, those questions with um, uh, notifications or using different apps or taking notes. Uh, follow-up conversations um, because in nowadays I don't think our youth need that much advice um, they can get lots of advice on the internet 
they want to get if they really want an advice they can find it um maybe it's i'm i actually feel privileged if someone asks asks me hey what do you think um because they could find it anywhere else um but i think our youth needs what they're seeking is to be heard and seen um and that we believe in them and help them to interpret information and advice that they're give, getting on the internet um, and pointing them to Jesus. Um, and I think listening, asking questions and keeping them accountable, it's a great way to do that. 